<laughs> Welcome to Picture Language Seminar. It's September 12th in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we're very happy to have our hybrid seminar. Today, the speaker is Jun Yang. He's a postdoctoral fellow here at Harvard. Jun was the last student of Vaughn Jones and came here a couple of years ago. We're very happy to hear about limiting multiplicities, trace formulas, and for Neumann dimension. So, Jun, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, uh, I would like to talk about my recent result on limit multiplicity trace formulas and moment dimensions. I will explain all the concepts and definitions at first. Okay, so let's start. Uh, before the statement of my result, I would like to uh, talk about the the flavor of my result. So that is the classical prime number zero. It says, if you take limit as an approach to infinity and consider the quotient of the number of prime, no less than an integer n, divided by the function n quotient by log n, the limit of this quotient is one. You can see that in the numerator, we always have an integer. But um, for the denominator, there's, this is just a real number. But limit is one. Next, that is uh, an informal statement of my result. Actually, I proved the limit of, the, of some multiplicity divided by a von Neumann dimension is one. Uh, Here's the plan of this talk. I will start from the most basic example, which is as the full model group SL2 over integers and the discrete series representation of the most elementary Lie group SL2R. And then I will extend this result to any Lie group and extend discrete series to bounded subset of irreducible representation of G. And I will explain to you what is a bounded subset of, uh, of the irreducible representation of Lie group. Then I will show you how we can connect the other cellbook trace formula with the trace on the von Neumann algebra. Then I will state the result and discuss the sketch of proof. Any questions? Uh, okay, now let's start. Uh, let's, the first uh, is not the limit multiplicity problem, but the multiplicity problem itself. Let's start with the most easy case. We just consider finite groups. We assume G is a finite group and gamma is a subgroup of G. So gamma is automatically finite group. And then we consider the quasi-regular representation denoted by R. That is the right action of G on L2 functions on quotient space, G quotient by gamma. The action is given by this formula. A group element G will send the L2 function phi x to its value at xg. Because this is a, a representation of finite group, so it can be decomposed completely. So the L2 functions on the quotient space can be isomorphic as a G module to a direct sum of irreducible ones. Now, it, here comes the first question. What is the multiplicity I'm sub -high? Uh, the answer to this question is quite straightforward. First, we note that the L2 function is nothing but the induced representation of the trivial 
representation of the subgroup gamma. So I'm a sub high is the dimension of the G equivalent map from the induced representation to pi. Then we can show that this dimension is also dimension of the gamma equivalent map that is given by the Frobenius reciprocity. Then this space is the high to the gamma, which is the um, vectors in the underlying Hilbert space H pi, which is fixed by every group element of gamma. So now we have a clear, we have an explicit formula of the multiplicity M sub pi. So that is the finite group case. Now we move to a uh, Lie group case. This SL2R is no longer finite group, group and is not compact. So in this part, we assume G is SL2 over the real field. And we also take the classical lattice, which is L2 over integer. And we also consider the quasi-regular limitation denoted also by R. That is the G action on the quotient space. The explicit action is the same as before. So it comes to the same question. What is the decomposition of this quasi-regular limitation? The answer, unfortunately, is that we do not have uh, the expected answer is not a direct sum. So in other words, we cannot expect to decompose R as any direct sum. Uh, actually, this result was first proved by Selberg in 1950s. He proved that the L2 functions on the quotient space is mainly made up by two parts. First one is discrete spectrum and second one is continuous spectrum. Only for the first this discrete spectrum, it can be written as direct star, but for the continuous spectrum, it's no longer a direct star, but direct interval. Um, in this decomposition, we still has m pi here, which is the multiplicity. So the question is, can we get any informa information of this multiplicity? So just keep this in mind that the discrete part can be become written as a direct star. And we also we can also prove the multiplicity is finite for each irreducible representation pi of G. So the, que the question is question natural. What is the value of the multiplicity? The answer is unknown. So the multiplicity is unknown for almost all pi. So because for non-compact Lie group, we do not have any Frobenius reciprocity zero. Uh, before handle, handling this decomposition, we should know what is the family of irreducible representation of this Lie group G. Or you can ask what is the unitary door of this Lie group? Here, at least uh, a complete classification of all the irreducible limitation of SL2R. The first one is the so-called discrete series. You can say that they are indexed by a discrete side, which is the integer no less than two. The second family is called principal series, they are indexed by real numbers. The third family is called complementary series. They are indexed by the open unit interval. The fourth one, there are only two irreducible representation, and the last one is the trivial one. So this gives you the classification of all irreducible representation of SL2R. And questions? Okay, that's, uh, I think we can visualize the representation of SL2R. So that is the uh, the decomposition, uh, the classification I just mentioned. 
And there are many three parts, discrete series, principal series, and the remaining repetitions. If you just treat them as side, they are the discrete union of three parts, integers, two copy of real lines, and uh, an in open interval, and three points. So we can visualize the, all the repetitions by the, this graph. So you can see we can identify each repetition with a point in on the uh, real plane. Yeah, that is how we can visualize the representation. Now let's go back to the multiplicity problem. Just recall that the discrete part can be decomposed as a direct sum and each representation appeared with a finite multiplicity um, M sub gamma of pi. Uh, luckily, even a few multiplicity are known. And they are related to cusp form. And cusp form are some classical concepts from number theory. And uh, just copy the definition of class form here. We pick an integer, and uh, a class form of fit k is a holomorphic function defined on the upper half band edge, satisfying the following two properties. The first one is kind of gamma invariant property. The second is some analytic property. And we also denote by i sub k of gamma with space of cusp form of beta k. Uh, Goldfund and his collaborator proved the following result in 1960s for discrete series pi sub k. The multiplicity can, is nothing but dimension of cusp form. So that is the only multiplicity we know for the limitations. So just keep in mind that is the equality proof by Goldfund, the multiplicity is the dimension of cusp form. And now we pick a special, special family of um, lattice, gamma n, which is the group, um, the element of SL2 over integer, which is trivial modulo n. And we can consider the multiplicity of, uh, for this group, it can be given by dimension of the class form with respect to this subgroup. Uh, this can be given by this formula. And I should mention, this is not a straightforward computation. You should apply the riemann roch theorem for the corresponding module curve to get this result. You can see that if you let in a port to infinity, the multiplicity goes to infinity as well. But this is not the limit multiplicity, multiplicity problem. That is the multiplicity problem. We are trying to find some nice function from integer to real numbers such that the limit of this quotient is what? Um, and at the first glance, and such function is quite straight and difficult. Uh, and that is so-called the limit multiplicity problem. There is a answer for this problem. That is the main theme for this talk. I prove that F can be given by von Neumann dimensions. Okay, uh, probably some of the audience do not know von Neumann dimensions. So now let's come to the definition of von Neumann dimension. Let's look at the left regular repetition of this discrete group. So this time we just consider the, the regular repetition, no quasi regular repetition anymore. So it just acts on the L2 space. And the group von Neumann algebra of gamma by definition, we denote by L gamma is the weak operator color of the image of action. That is a subset of all the bounded operator on the L2 space. So that is the definition of group volume algebra of a discrete group. There is a choice. We usually call it the choice because 
because it's usually the unique choice is given by the following inner product. Based on this, suppose now we are given a module H or the group from my algebra L gamma. There must be an isomorphism such light. H is isomorphic as L gamma module as this space. P here is projection in the commutant. And here we have a copy of L2 functions. And then L2 or the natural number is just any infinite dimensional Hilbert space. So uh, this result tells us um, any L gamma module can be isomorphic as, a L uh, as a, the, the composition of projection and this space. The von Neumann dimension uh, denoted by uh, dimension sub L gamma of H is the choice of P. The choice here is the choice on this factor is given by the choice here. And the capital choice is canonical choice. Uh, that's the choice class operator, the choice for light operator. So here comes some nice property of von Neumann dimension. First, the von Neumann dimension of the L2 functions on the group is one. So in this way, we usually call the L2 functions the standard module. Second, dimension function is summable. So the dimension of a direct sum is sum of dimension. Third, if the center of the group movement algebra is trivial, is complex number, or we call it this factor, two, two L gamma module have the same dimension if and only if they are isomorphic as L gamma module. There are also many other beautiful properties, but uh, uh, there's no time for statement of them. Okay, now, we have no definition of Wunderman dimension. I would like to mention this concept is not a singular concept in mass. It's connected to Lie, group, Lie groups. So we go back to a, a Lie group and we also take a lattice gamma inside. And by a lattice, we mean the volume of the quotient space is finite. And we also take discrete series, pi of h of g. By a discrete series, we mean uh, reducible rotations appear in regular rotation. The following one is a famous theorem proved by Hadia and Smith in the 1970s. They prove that the volume dimension of uh, L gamma module h is nothing but the product of the volume, which is finite, and the um, parameter d of pi. That is the formal dimension, and I will also introduce the definition here. The formal dimension of the discrete series pi is given by this formula. You can see that here we have inner product over L2 functions on G. Here we have inner product over the underlying Hilbert space H. And the blue term here is usually called metric coefficient is given by this formula. It's always L2 functions. So we can take the inner product. Here I provide a concrete example to show you how to compute volume dimension. We also take the principal subgroup of G we have just introduced. And we also take the square series of G, which is SL2R. We have, we have already visualized this. They are discrete points on the real plan. And by gauss bonnet zero, we can get the volume of the quotient space. And by some results by Harry Chandra, we can know the, the formal dimension of this discrete series. And then we can apply the theorem by RT and Smith, just consider the product. We can show that the von Neumann dimension of gamma n for the discrete series H sub k is given by this formula. 
Okay, now we know some concrete example of Fourier dimension. Uh, now it's ready to state the limit multiplicity for SL2R. Is there any question before the the statement, the following statement? Okay, now, now let's collect all the data we have. First, we pick a family of lattice gamma n in the most easy Lie group SL2R. And then we take the discrete series representation of G. And for the multiplicity, we have already get them by the dimension of cast form. They are given by this form. And for the monument dimension, we just compute them. They are given by such formula. At this step, we can take the quotient and then take limit. We find that the limit of this quotient is limit of this complex formula. Uh, you can cancel the common terms. And then the limit is one. So uh, when I just when I first met this result, it's very interesting for me. So I think the, this is not just a coincidence. I just want to extend this not just restricted to SL2Z in SL2R. I want to extend this result to all groups. So just uh, recall that what we have for SL2R, the limit of the multiplicity quotient by one dimension is what? Here's a natural question. Is this true in general? In general, I mean, how about other group and the other reputation besides this great series? There are some difficulties for generalization. First, most multiplicity m gamma m sub gamma of pi is are unknown. That is quite different from what we have for this great series of SL two R. So there's not any there's not any formula for the multiplicity. Second, some Lie groups have no discrete series. So we cannot consider discrete series of such family of Lie groups. Actually, Harish Chandra proof a Lie group has discrete series series if and only if the rank of the Lie group G has the rank is the same as the rank of K. K here is the maximal compact subgroup of G. And third, if I pi H is not discrete series, the underlying Hilbert space is not a L gamma module. So we cannot expect any monument dimension. So there are the three main difficulty to handle. And there is a solution. I will replace the discrete series by bounded subset of the unitary door. And I will explain to you what is a bounded subset of the unitary door. Let's go back to the irreducible representation as of SL2R. We have already seen that it can be embedded in the real plan. So it's a different union of these three parts. That is what we have known. So we have already known that the irreducible representation can be embedded in the real plan. Let's say it's a canonical embedding. And as, uh, this embedding is not special for SL2R. Actually, we can consider the bounded subset of the unitary door of any Lie group. So we start with a group semi-simple real Lie group G. And there is an embedding which, um, where we can embed all the irreducible limitation of G into a finite union of real of Euclidean space. The dimension is at most the rank of G. So this is embedding is a set theoretical embedding. There's no topology on this embedding. And we call a subset of the rental door is bounded if it's bounded in the Euclidean space. Uh, you can also give another equivalent definition. It's relatively compact in the field topology. Uh, I will not talk about the field topology here. That is a very natural topology on the door space. OK. 
here we come to a natural, also a very natural definition. For a bounded subset of Rinchi dual, we define the most multiplicity m sub gamma of x to be to be the sum of all the multiplicities of the representation pi in a pair here. Here's a natural question. Is this number finite? Actually, based on the following result proved by Borrell and Garland in the 1980s, for a bounded subset X, only finitely many irreducible representation appeared in the discrete part of L2 function on the quotient space. So, F gamma of X is a finite sum of finite numbers. So it's finite, hence it's well defined. Any questions? Uh, okay, now let's move on. Uh, just keep in mind, uh, we are going to generalize the multiplicity result from SL to R and discrete series to any irreducible representation of an arbitrary D group. Now we need a mirror on the unitary door. That is the famous Plancherot theorem. There is a mirror new sub G on the unitary door, such that the L2 functions on G is as isomorphic as GG by module as a direct integral of this tensor product. And the isomorphism is given by Fourier transform. We start from L2 function f. The Fourier transform uh, is value at pi is given by such formula. So that is the statement of Plancherot theorem. Uh, the, uh, the main thing is here, there is a mirror on the tool, and there is also an isomorphism of L2 space. But we have just defined the bounded subset of unit dual. We can show that a subset, if uh, X is subset is bounded, the planter mirror of X is finite. And if we just take a point, which is a discrete series, uh, we can show that it is a discrete series if it's an atom. By atom, we mean it's a single point that has positive planetary mirror. And in this case, we can show that the planetary mirror is just uh, the formal dimension. So that is kind of generalization of formal dimension of a discrete series. And third thing is that the support of the planetary mirror is the so-called tempered irreducible, irreducible limitations. By definition, they are the representations whose metric coefficient is in the L2 plus epsilon functions for any positive epsilon. And the unit door can be decomposed as two part and they are a discrete union of so tempered part and untempered part. For the tempered representation of SL2R uh, are the discrete series and the principal series. We have already visualized them on uh, the real plan. Uh, and I think uh, this, the planetary mirror and the decomposition um, uh, is well studied by Wasserman, Playman, Claire, Crisp, and Kixon for the reduced cis algebra for not only real group, but also PID groups. So let's continue to the discussion of planetary mirror on the unitary door. So we take a bounded subset X of the unitary door. Mm. We define H sub X to be the direct integral of all the underlying hyperspace appeared in X. We can show that H X is module over the group G. So it's naturally a module over the subgroup gamma. 
we can further show that is a module over the group of minimal algebra L gamma. The natural, a natural question comes out, what is dimension of H sub X? That uh, is a result proved one year ago. For lattice in G, the dimension of H sub X is the product of the volume of the coarse space and uh, pl the planter mirror of X. And first thing is, is motivated by the L2, the, the work by Kiad, Peterson and Vass for their study of the von Neumann dimension of over a non-discrete group. And they start with a faithful normal trivial weight on LG. But here we just consider a choice, not just a trivial weight. But you, you know that the bounded subset can be decomposed at two parts First is the temper part, and second is the untempered part. And by this theorem, only the tempered part contributes to the planter mirror. So only the tempered part contributes to the, the von Neumann dimension. And I should mention these results can uh, will reduce it to the Atia Smith theorem if you just take X to be a single discrete series. If you take X to be a single discrete series, the planter mirror here is a formal dimension. So that is just a statement of the theorem by Atian Smith. Any question? Okay, I, th I think uh, now is the time to give you the clear statement of the result on limit multi places. So let's collect the data again. Uh, recall that the, uh, the multiplicity of a repetition is the copy of it in the discrete part of the L2 functions on the quotient space. And we, we already defined the multiplicity of a bounded subset of X, which is the sum of the multiplicity of a single repetition. Also, we define H sub X to be the direct integral of all the underlying Hilbert space content in X. And we can, by the previous result, we can know the volume dimension of this L gamma module. So here's the state statement of the limit multiplicity result. Let G be a semi-simple Rayleigh group. We always assume it's non compact because in the compact case, the uh, limit multiplicity um, problem is kind of trivial. And we take X to, to be a bounded subset of unitary door. We can show that the limit as in a port to infinity of the multiplicity quotient by the one dimension is one. And there is still some restriction for this. So when G and the family of lattice satisfy either one of the following conditions. First, all the con uh, lattices are co-compact and the introduction is trivial and they are normal in the first one and they are of finite index in the first one. Second, in this case, the lattice uh, are generalization of the so-called principal congruent subgroup. In this case, we just extend the result from SL2R to SLNR, but because we involve uh, a, a quite a large family of repetitions, not restrict us to discrete series. So that is the statement of my result and questions. Oh, okay, so now I would like to discuss a sketch of the proof for this result. Let's consider the restricted left action of gamma from G on the L2 functions on G. We can show it's isomorphic as a, a gamma module to um, Tensor product 
First one is the live the regular repetition of L of gamma. Second one is the desired L2 functions and quotient space. We can show the commutant of L gamma is nothing but the tensor product, tensor product of the right Neumann, group of Neumann algebra and all the bounded operator on L2 functions and quotient space. So there is a choice on this commutant, which is given by the choice on the group of Neumann algebra and the euro choice on the bounded, on, on the bounded operators on Hilbert space. Any question? Let's look at the quasi regular repetition of G on the quotient space. We can induce from this repetition uh, another repetition of the smooth function on G with compact support. That is the so called hack algebra. There's an action of hack algebra on the quotient space given by this formula. So phi here is a smooth function with compact support. So the, the action is denoted by R sub gamma of phi. If the L2 functions on the quotient space can be decomposed as a direct sum, then the action of the hack algebra can be decomposed as a direct sum of the action of hack algebra for each irreducible rotation. So we expect to take the choice of this equality. Now we can, I will show you how we can take choice. First, assume the quotient space G quotient by gamma is compact. In this case, we can show R gamma of a smooth function with compact support is always a choice class operator. And the choice is given by the Selberg choice formula. And on the other hand, this operator is in the commutant and we have the choice on the commutant. We can show the choice, the choice on the commutant is given by this formula. So R gamma of phi is given by the Selberg choice formula. The difficult case is that the quotient space is not compact. In this case, R gamma of phi is no, no longer in the choice class. So we cannot compute any choice. But we have to apply a projection, just projection from the L2 space to a subspace called Caspido subspace. I will not give you the precise definition here, but it's and just keep in mind, it's a closed subspace L of the L2 functions on the quotient space. Luckily, we have following result. If you compose the, the projection on the two sides of R phi, R gamma of phi, this compose operator, operator is always in the choice class. And the choice is given by the other choice formula. The other choice formula is much more difficult than the Selberg choice formula. And I will not give, give you either one formula of these two choices. Uh, we can show that the choice uh, in the commutant can be given by this a similar formula here. So the, the lowercase choice is the choice on the monument algebra and the capital here is the euro twist. Any questions? Uh, to finish proof, we should consider another right action of G. Let, let's consider the left action of gamma on L2 functions. By the Cranchero theorem, we know that is isomorphic as a GD by module to the integral of this tensor product. And we should keep our attention on the second factor appeared in the direct integral. 
there's naturally an action of G, and there's naturally action of the hack algebra, which is the algebra of smooth functions on G with compact support. We can show that the right action here, I mean, the direction R here, of a function is in the commutant if the function is smooth with compact support. Luckily, the choice formula of this operator is quite easy. It's the product of the volume of the quotient space and the, the value of phi at the group uh, identity, the group element. So based on this, two different actions of G and gamma, we can prove that Suppose they are given a, a tower of, of lattices in G, gamma one, so set gamma two. And if the limit of this choice quotient by this one, so in the numerator, we have the positive regular notation, but for the denominator, we have the right regular notation. If the true choice of this two operator has limit what the quotient of the two trees has limit what we can show that the limit um, multiplicity problem is true. So based on these two different actions, we can reduce to my result to this lemma. So we we can just it's it suffices to prove this lemma, but that is the difficulty. Um. This like the proof of this lemma is mainly based on the following two results. First is Salgo's density result. It says that the Fourier transform of, of the space of smooth functions on G with compact support are dense in the integrable functions on the temporal door. That is given in 1997. And second, is an extension of Arthur's trace formula. It's done by Phineas Lapid and Mueller in 2011. So that's how for, we first reduce my theorem to the lemma, and the lemma is based on these two results. Any questions? Oh, okay, so that's it's all I, I planned for the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for a really beautiful talk. Um, do you have any idea about the rate of convergence? Oh, I think uh, I read some paper. It's, it's related to light, and it's also related to the Ramanujan conjecture. And Laplace. To, to which conjecture? Uh, Ramanujan conjecture. On um, the eigenvalue of the Laplace. So do you have any idea what this rate of convergence would be? Oh, no, not, I have. I still have no idea because that uh, is a long-term open problem. So are there any questions from the online audience? Where, where is your paper on the archive? Yeah, this paper is already on archive for four months. George, did you want to say something? Thanks. Um, thanks. Um, um, <clears throat> I was. Um, I was talking with Jim Arthur yesterday, and he was interested in um, in this um, seminar, but he um, wasn't able to attend. You can tell him it will be on YouTube. Oh, I, all right. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I can send you the link. Okay. Good. No. Do you have any comment yourself? I I don't I don't think so. Thanks. Um, I, I'm, I'm. Well, I was I was interested to see that um, 
that this is a that I mean always in the theory of group representations um, one uh, comes across uh, C star algebras as a as a tool. So I was interested to see them come in uh, now at least in a in a um, tangential way. Very beautiful. Thank you. Are there any other questions or remarks? So someone in the chat would like the archive number for the paper. Oh, uh, on, I think you can just search by name on, on Google. It's nice. And you can find the paper. I have tried to do so. Well, if there are no other questions or comments, then uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to have Mandarin Choi from Toronto is going to be visiting here. He's the expert on completely positive maps. And he'll give a talk. So bye-bye. See you next week. Thank you.